Hey folks, uh, thanks, uh, uh, thanks so much for uh, 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 joining us. I, I'm the best at starting these off. You, you got to see me MC a show. So uh, I'm talking to the one and only uh, uh, the Mexican Ironman who I, I spoke with uh, uh, last week. Um, and we talked about, uh, Mike, what did we talk about? <laughs> well, you know, it was funny. We got on the we got on the show to start talking. I thought we were only going to go to He-Man, but we started talking about a lot of things in general. And I think what we really started talking about uh, generally is uh, about what what Hollywood does to the properties we love. I mean, that's kind of what happened last week. We we started talking yes. about some of the external environmental factors as to you know what what is what what are the causes and what's the environment as to why these people take these properties of fandom properties that we love and then they just kind of manipulate them for god knows why or what and and i think the a lot of the a lot of our discussion that we had focused on uh on selling out and you know what you know do you you know what factor does money play in in what happens and i think that's kind of how we spent that that you know 45 minutes or an hour no, I, yeah and and why i asked i asked you back and i appreciate you coming back is because i remember you told a story about uh mike told us beautiful story where you know you know as a child uh, uh you know well, i can tell it if you want i mean i don't mind tell, tell the story it. it was very when i when i heard it i was like the same thing pretty much happened to me but well, i think i think that's why we get along so well i think you know uh one, one of the i think i felt a lot of chemistry i do a lot of these shows but you know not that i mean it's you know that's I look, I'll just tell a story. So one of the things that's happened is that on YouTube, although I don't really have my own, I mean, I do have a channel, but I release like one video every six months. It's usually something related to my kid, but uh, I do appear on a lot of shows. And what happened was with the He-Man stuff uh, prior to that, I'd, I'd done some ranting about what happened, what's happened with Star Trek, what's happened with Star Wars. And, you know, I already kind of already knew that this He-Man stuff with uh, Kevin Smith, I knew things weren't going to go in the right direction. Um, I had planned on watching it and I had a meltdown and I had to really do some exploration as to why I had a meltdown and really focus because it hit me pretty hard. Um, I think I started crying on one show. I certainly ranted on three different shows all over YouTube, Midnight's Edge, Doomcock show, Midnight's Edge after dark, uh, which is our evening show. I'm on the team at Midnight's Edge. We have a morning show and an afternoon show, Tuesdays, Thursdays, morning show, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. And I had to think about what did this. And you know what it was is I think, Watching Hollywood takes this property, which, look, some people argue that, hey, listen, that the, the He-Man Adventure series, animated cartoon series, was nothing more than a gimmick to sell toys. But you know, it was much more than that. If you know anything about the family, you know that it's a, it, it was the family business. Uh, in fact, the daughter was integrally involved with her pop, um, putting it together. Uh, it really was a family-oriented business. So now I didn't know that at the time. I learned this much later. But there's a lot of love and a lot of thought that went went into that went into that show. Now, for me, what happened was is that when I was really young, uh, my mom always wanted to move us forward. I mean, you know, I, I grew up without a dad. My dad found out my my real mom was pregnant. Uh, he took off. Um, one way, one reason or another, I ended up getting raised by my aunt. I won't go into that story here. And so I was basically adopted. And uh, that mom who raised me. Uh, was always hyper obsessed with us getting to the next level. She worked two jobs, she went to school at night. So we went to this kind of, uh, we were in the crappiest apartment building that we could afford in the nicest part of San Jose in which we lived. And I was the only Mexican kid there. And as a little kid, um, all that everybody saw was Mexican. I didn't have any interaction with anyone else. And you know, you're, you're a kid and you don't, uh, you know, you don't really know racism until someone teaches it to you kind of thing. And we used to play this little game called, uh, me and my friends at school, we used to play this game called um, King. Sometimes they called it slave, usually it's called King. And every, you know, everybody picked their role and I was always a slave. So I, I would get hit by a rose bush and I had to carry all the kids' backpacks. And you know, and I, I remember one time I said, hey, well, come on, I'm always a slave. And they're like, well, because you're the darkest one. And you know, you're whatever, seven, eight, six, seven, Wait, eight. They, they said that? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah. And uh, and oh yeah yeah and you Whoa. know I mean to me it made sense I was I was like I was like yeah that makes sense I'm the darkest one okay I'll do it let's go and I was excited about it too up until things got a little you know you know that kind of thing now now that being said is that is that there's one day where I was playing out in the we had this apartment building shaped like an L okay and there's this a little uh, 
tree and the grass area in the middle. And I was playing with my He-Man figures. And Eddie, who was kind of the ringleader of our little, you know, little posse, because the way it worked is that you would walk to school and every other apartment building, or well, there were nice houses and not so nice houses on that block. And then like, then there were the apartments and then the school. And so they were kind of, you know, that was kind of like how we would, you know, we were one guy, two guys, three guys, four or five, there were one, two, three, there were five of us. And I was the last one in line, obviously. And so one day I was playing um, with some He-Man figures and he was riding his bike and he saw me and he said, hey, I have He-Man figures. So he went and he went and picked up his. And then we, and then um, um, I'm not, it wasn't that day, but I think the next day and the next day, the next thing you know, all of us are playing with our He-Man figures and none of us had enough money or got enough gifts so that we all had a complete character, you know, like Gray Skull and every single figure, but we all had one or two or three and some of them overlap. And so we would reenact the, the, the shows that we saw. We would, we would just redo them. And, and it was neat because that's what brought us together. And ultimately, Eddie, who was the redhead kid who, you know, who was the king, you know, the ringleader. Well, that game ended up going by the wayside because one day I stood up for myself. Um, I was thinking of Luke Skywalker and I took a stick and I said, I'm not doing this anymore. But right at about the same time I stood up for myself, this incident happened with the He-Man stuff. And that ended up being what brought us all together. I mean, we would play every day after school, like, I don't know, 3, 3.30-ish, something like that. We would usually get out, I think it was around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. And this is what we would do together. And all the stuff about race, uh, different, me being different, I was one of them, they were one of me. Eddie went on to be my best friend until we moved to another part of town years later. I mean, I, I, actually, this he stuff makes me want to look him up, too. And uh, that's what brought us together. And all my life, ever since that time I was a little kid, I've never had any problems with, or really thought about, I mean, things have happened here there over the years, but to me, races and, and diversity is all about understanding. Robert Meyer Burnett talks about everybody's got a story to tell. You just have to listen. And that's what happened that day. That day is when me and Eddie started getting to know each other. So fast forward to a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago with Kevin Smith. When I saw this show that basically from where I was at was nothing like how I remembered it. All of a sudden, um, it's like the seven year old kid in me, seven, six, seven, eight year old kid in me got triggered. Yeah. And something that I loved, something that made me feel equal, something that brought me and my buddies together was just, I don't know, like, I don't know, ripped and, away, and punched. And, or, and Mike, that, that was the thing that uh, the other guests that I had uh, on uh, uh, Max, he couldn't understand that. You know what I mean? Like, he couldn't understand why it was such a big nerve. Like, he's like, why don't you just move along? And it's like, to me, I was like, no, because these prop, these, you know, these shows, these memories that you have. These cultural myths. Yes. What, what happens is, is that that stays with you for your whole life. So when that's what I was pissed off about, uh, uh, He-Man and, 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 and several other things I've been pissed off about. And, you know, it, were you watching, you just go, this is this, like, I, I like, okay. One of my favorite sayings is, uh, and I'm going to screw it up is, uh, when I was a child, I thought of as a child, but when I grew up, I put away childish, I put away my childish things. Right. Mm, okay. So I believe in when when you like i watch i love watching documentaries and where me too w w yeah like where a guy has a dream about you know a toy right and he's like you know i want to make this toy for kids i want to you know and the and the passion this guy has and and he he went to all these doors and he had these meetings with these people and and they were like no no how you know no that's not going to work and he's like no no it's going to work and he kept fighting or she kept fighting or whatever. And, and they finally, and, and it was a big success because, mm -hmm. uh, but, but it, today I just think like, if I have an idea for a toy and I come to you and you're a, 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 a big toy company and I say, listen, uh, Mike, here's my toy, uh, you know, that I want to share. Uh, I want, I believe kids will play with this. You immediately sit there. You, you don't think as a child anymore. You think as a businessman, you just mm -hmm. go, you just sit there. I agree. And, you, you just sit there and go, well, you know, how can we make it cheaper if we put this on it? Or we, we you know, uh, we can make the product so much cheaper uh, as smaller. Uh, one of the best stories I, I, I heard was uh, you remember the, uh, the, the wrestling doll, the big wrestling uh, uh, 
like the in the 80s they, they used to make the big uh uh, uh wrestling figurines okay? yeah i remember them i didn't have any but i, I knew they existed okay so. so people people what happened was is the guy sent uh the wrong like he he just sent a big like a big doll right like the big one and uh they said this is great and he wanted he he literally wanted smaller ones okay you know but the big one kids love the you know because you could grab it you could you know yeah. you're, you're, you know like gi joe was bigger like the yeah, star wars action figures were small and the gi joes were huge right so right. they they you know and and if you're a kid you're like i love it being big i love it being you know this thing where i could hold on to it i could throw it or whatever it's not small the muscles are huge you know what i mean so right. the way the guy thought he thought like a kid you know yes. and, and and that's what i think these days like what i i believe that a lot of people are pissed off at kevin smith uh because they see through it and they just sit there and they go, the guy's not in there for, we, we used to think he was passionate about a product, but he's not, you no. know? And, and that's the thing that I believe, like, you know, when I go to this, I love going to the toy section and I look at stuff and I just go, how good is this? Or, you know, uh, would I buy this as a kid? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what would this do to me? You know what I mean? Like you look at stuff, and, and you just, there's no toy really out there that embodies like, wow, I, I got to have that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, you know, like where, it, it, you know, when you're a kid and you go to the, the you, you know, your mom or dad and yep. uh, like when I was a kid, uh, uh, there wasn't anything like, uh, um, like you, I remember you saying you had one toy. That was like me, man. I grew up in the projects in Toronto. Okay. okay. I grew up. Okay. Old. So, okay. So you got, you, you get me instantly then. Yeah. So I was, you know, I was that Italian kid that was in, uh, it was very multicultural. Okay. So I remember going downstairs, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, in, in, in the kids, they had their little area and I would just sit there and watch them play. And after mm -hmm. about a week or so, one of them said, Hey, if you want, you come over and you could, you could hear, you know, they gave me a figure. It was like a star Wars figurine. And okay. I was just like, okay, well, thanks. And he goes, I did you know what it was at the time or not yet? No, or I had no idea. He gave me the ugliest okay. dude on the planet. Like it was just, it was just, <laughs> it, it was, it was like this, this ugly. Cause I never he saw gave, He gave you one of the cantina guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what he did. Right. Okay. And no, I'm sorry. He gave me the robot with the really, uh, uh, 3PO, C3PO. No, no, not the, not the, not C3PO. The, the R2D2. One, the, no, the one that. Uh, it was like one. It was like a a, a little robot from Star Wars. What the hell? Okay, I'm it? blanking. I'm, I'm I've never been into Star Wars action figures, so that's why I'm blanking. So he gave know. me this this figurine. It was like a, a little robot. It was like R2D2, but it was like the one that gets tortured in the movie. Remember? Oh yeah. Um, Oh, Jesus, I'm like, yeah, anyway, go ahead with the story. Go ahead. Anyways, go, go ahead. So they bring me over and they're like, OK, we're going to build a fort. You're over here and then you're on this team. And I was just like, OK, and you slowly, you know, you, you know, the, it's like you're done playing. You had a blast and they're like, OK, uh, you know, come, come, you know, you, you know, I was like, I couldn't wait for the next day to run down there to go play yes. again. Yes, mm -hmm. that's how I was every day with He Man after school. Yeah, so it kind of to me, you know, and I, I was I was black kids, white kids. It didn't matter. It was just we were just sitting there, and the only time, like the guy that I, you know, I told you, like uh, when my brother fell over the balcony because he's an idiot. He was on my bike. He fell over because he was talking to his friend, and he he went right over and he just he he could have. Anyways, he could have cut himself in half with, if he landed on the fence. So uh, 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 Gavin uh, uh, and his brother, Mike, who was older, they said, you know, if you want, you can sleep over our place. And, you know, they would introduce me more into Star Wars. There was no, we never talked about, it was nothing like Mike, it was not like today about race or anything like that. We're just kids. Yes. You know? 
And it, yes. it was like, it was just like, we wait, were, are you well, telling me you didn't need diversity education in school? No, <laughs> none of that. It was just like, it was like, uh, and I remember, uh, I remember I was a pretty tough kid. Right. Yeah. And so I remember a guy bullied Mike, uh, bullied, uh, Gavin and Gavin was not a fighter. Right. You got to okay. remember, he just wasn't, you know, some guys just don't fight. And this bigger black kid, I swear, like, anyways, he uh, uh, was bullying. Uh, uh, and it was the first time I heard the word N word. Mm. Right. And he called uh, uh, he called Gavin the N word. And I didn't know what that was. So I just I, re I remember this. I remember getting into a vicious fight with the guy in the elevator the kid the other kid me and him mm -hmm. got in the, like i me we he came in, in the elevator uh and he called him the n-word and pushed him around and finally i just anyways we got into a heavy duty fight inside the elevator right i remember people coming in <laughs> i remember people coming in and we're still fighting man that's a pretty tight cage match right there if you're yeah, in an I elevator and if you're in an elevator in the projects and oh. you're getting in a fight dude that's oh. like the ultimate i mean that's that's like oh yeah. gavin loved me gavin gavin like gavin was like uh you're my brother because afterwards uh his older brother heard about a mic uh yeah. and he was just like hey man what you did was solid and mm -hmm. you know that was cool that was great you know thank you but I remember telling my dad, because um, you know, I you know, I used to get into fights all the time. So I told my dad, and my dad's not a violent guy. And he said, Why is your face all messed up? What the hell? You get into another fight? And I said, No, uh, you know, uh, we're in the elevator and uh guy called uh 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 Gavin a name. And he goes, What'd he call him? And I said the N-word. And that's the only time in my life I've ever said this because my mm -hmm. dad said to me, I remember he turned around on the couch, looked at me and he goes, never say that word again. Wow. And I, go, I go, why dad? And he goes, whoever said that word is uneducated. And for my dad, when he says somebody's not educated, right. that means the person is stupid. Mm. He's Italian. Like he just, yeah. you know, like, you know, that guy is stupid. He's uneducated. Don't, yes. talk, don't yes. talk to that guy. So yeah. don't, don't ever say that word. Yep. So the only time I ever said it was when I was 10 years old. Okay. And I remember with, with uh, Gavin, Gavin never said it. Mike never said it. No one ever said it. It, it was that one kid that said it. So, you, you know, and, and me and him would always you know, we give each other looks like if you ever want to go again, let's go again. You know what I mean? But it was like, if we'd go again, Mike, it was going to be a mess. Right. So right. anyways, it was awesome as a child to just sit there and not think like uh, this, this toy here, uh, you know, uh, uh, it was just this toy needs, you know, it needs to be diverse or whatever. It was nothing like that. It was just right. like, Hey man, if you are, and, and I get it, uh, my, my brother's gay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now he was picked on a lot. Okay. And okay. He, went, he went through hell, but that was, we're talking about seventies and eighties when we were kids. And I used to, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's not a fighter. I am, but people were so different that people didn't know that he was my brother. And mm. then when people knew he was my brother, they would stay away from him because mm. they knew I was a little psychopath. Right. Right. <laughs> so, so they would go, oh, Vito, Vito, that's his brother. Like it's like, it's night and day. If you saw us, it's night and day. Right. right. So anyways, it was like, I, I understand that, that things were very, things were hard for gay people or, or, you know, uh, uh, whatever you are, uh, it, it was tough, but it was also tough if you were short. It yes. Was, it was also tough if you weren't that smart. Like, yes. Uh, it was all, it was tough if you were, uh, taller than everybody else. Yes. 
So this whole thing about what I, I, I see and it makes me angry is, listen, I have scars when I was a kid and it bugs yeah. me when I think about it. You know, I okay. go, you know what? If I ever see that guy again, I remember his name's Corey. Whenever I, if I ever see Corey again, I'm going to beat the living shit out of him. <laughs> you know, that, like, I don't care if he's in the mall with his grandmother in a wheelchair and he wants to give me a hug because he misses me. I'm literally going to beat the living shit out of him. So uh, uh, now why would I do that? Because I'm a man child. You know, it's yeah. just it's well, I think I mean, I think one of the things that people misunderstand or don't understand or don't get. And that's why we as mostly men, I mean, very not as many women, but we as men, we tend to collect. I mean, we tend to collect things and remember things. There's still in order to be the men that we are, we still have to love and remember the things we appreciated as youth. I mean, you take I mean, let's just go around my I mean, I didn't plan it this way, but I got Iron Man mask there. I mean, you know, the Mexican Iron Man thing isn't made up. You know, I got my my gaming computer. I got my Xbox. I got my. Sony PlayStation. I know, Mike. But you know, that's when I when I like to me, when you you said you you freaked out, you had every right to freak out. I don't. I I know. I didn't find it funny. I didn't sit there. I I literally got all watery eyed because I. Oh, thank I go, you. I go, I go. I go. This guy, you know, to me, that's my childhood, and he's sticking yeah. Up, he's sticking up for it. Yeah, he, he, and he, the other thing too that I got to tell you, Vito, is that is that I one of the things I think another one of my triggers that I had to reflect on has to be with uh I remember when Eddie that same kid that we used to play king and slave with he later uh similar situation he stuck up for me when I, someone was giving me a hard time and he beat the living snot out of him he says Mike's my friend and type of thing and this was we, we were a couple grades older we were then um and we weren't at Rosemary uh for kindergarten we went to Coventry for elementary school it was the name of the, of the elementary school and I think it was a third grade but so, it was a similar situation I was getting um um, kind of pushed around a little bit and he stood up for me and he went in the bathroom with these guys. He waited till they went in there and he stood up for me and, you know, he roughed him up. I didn't see what happened, but I know they took off running and he came out. He says, don't worry about them. I got you. And, you know, and you think about this, our cultural myths, something as someone would say as silly as he man, but it's really action figures and it's kids playing together. The integrity of the cultural myth had the ability to go for me as a little kid to where me and the, where I don't feel comfortable they're playing a game called Slave and King with me. To next thing you know, Eddie and I, not two or three years later, he's defending me and taking care of me better than I could at the time take care of myself. And if that isn't the kind of journey of life, then I don't know what the hell is. And these things with these people, uh, and thank God I'm starting to see signs at Disney that things are changing. I do believe the tide is changing. We can talk, we can go into that now if you want, because we've just had some some more, some more things have come up in the last week or two beyond Kevin Smith. But um, um, that doesn't affect Netflix, you know, because we have these woke centers. But what I was going to say is that the reason these things would, would, I think, really also trigger me wasn't just that seven year old experience. And like, that's how I got. To it. But it's also I'm sick and tired. And I'm going to say this, you know, I hopefully you know, people hear this because I think it needs to say it. it's why I have the name X and I'm sick and tired of all my white friends getting freaking call it picked on, bullied, canceled, uh, you know, they're called is phobes. I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely effing sick of it. And I'm not a white guy. I'm a Mexican. But you know what? These are my friends. And especially online the last couple of years where it's, we've been, you know, the only friends we can have are online. All of my best friends, Vito, unbelievably, I actually now have better friends that I've made on the Internet, especially in the last year. And to a lesser extent, the prior year, to a lesser extent, the prior year. Every year, I'm meeting more like-minded people. And, and I'm sick and freaking tired of all my white friends just getting these bull crap bullshit different you know accusations when i know who they are i know how they think i know what they believe yeah i know how they've treated me take but, jeremy geeks and gamers yeah Je Je jeremy you know mexican iron man i used to have a different name on the internet i used to go by my real name then i went by mike the mogul and then i got so pissed off i said you know what i'm be mexican iron man you know why because no one's gonna t say shit to me of the positions i take of fandom against the, this diversity crap and all that but, you know, I've rarely been on camera. In fact, this is probably one of only maybe five or six shows out of maybe, I don't know, 50 that I've done where I'm on camera. Normal time, it's a Mexican Iron Man with a sombrero and all that stuff. But one time, I, Jeremy, I'm in, the, I'm in his chat stream and I sent him a super chat. And then on my Twitter feed, which you can go back and find later if anyone that wants to check it out. This happened, just, just happened two months ago. I got called out that said Mexican Iron Man isn't really Mexican guy. He's just some white guy that Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers ha uh, that's on the Geeks and Gamers team that's that's uh, simping like he's Mexican, but he's not really. He's really a white guy. 
I'm like, what? And so, so for that whole week, anytime I had, a, anytime someone invited me on a live stream, I went camera on, I actually took a picture of me and my kids to show that, you know, Hey, I'm Mexican. I put it up on my Twitter and basically all my friends, basically all of them are white. Okay. They came and ran in my defense. So the same thing that happened when I was a little kid, it happened again. And so when I see these people screw with this stuff and I see my white friends being called this and that and ist and phobes and all that, my heart breaks and my soul gets angry because damn it. If it wasn't for the openness that I got to experience when I was an insecure little kid that let me know that I could be part of the American fabric and have an American dream, where would I be? I'd be nowhere. And so, damn it, I absolutely think that it was two things that triggered me and that, you know, I'm not mad that Kevin lied. And I'm not mad that he was never a role model me. I never, I'm, I never, it's like you were saying on the last show. I never thought he was really that good. I always thought his movies, you know, don't get me wrong. One of my best friends, a true brother to me, his name's Tom Connors from Midnight's Edge. He looked up to Kevin Smith as like, you know, the one of us and he's a nerd and he's an inspiration and inspired Tom to do a lot. I never found this guy as an inspiration because let me tell you this much, Vito. There's no way from a time standpoint that you can be a fan of everything. There's just no way. And I and and I'm very straight up. Like if someone says Doctor Who, for example, I'm the last person to talk about Doctor Who because I don't know shit about it. I think I've seen maybe five or six episodes. And it's not because I don't think it's great or it's not amazing. I just never did watch it up where I lived as a kid. It only came on at midnight. I was, I was just, my mom always made me go to sleep, but you know, eight, nine, 10 at the absolute latest. I never, it just wasn't, it just wasn't part of my growing up. And when I got older, it wasn't something that I got into. Now, that being said, my heart breaks for probably like yours did for me with the heat man. I can't imagine that because I do understand that Doctor Who is this cultural icon for basically all of the United Kingdom and people around the world. I just can't understand. I mean, my heart breaks for them because I know what the He-Man stuff means to me. I know what the character of Captain James Kirk means to me at Star Trek. He was like my dad because I didn't have a dad. And that show showed twice a day. And so almost every day, Monday through Friday, I would see Star Trek twice a day. I would see it late in the evening after dinner, and it came on in the afternoon. I play my He-Man. I'd go inside. I'd do my homework. Star Trek would come on on KTVU. And I'd later go eat, and then in dinner, and my mom comes home, and then it'll show, and then it'll be the last show I saw. So every day I saw two episodes every day. So, so Captain James Kirk was the only dad. I always said to myself, okay, when I grow up and be a man. I'm going to be like this guy. I'm going to be smart, and I'm going to have integrity, and I'm going to, you know, I mean, maybe it. Okay, maybe he overemphasized. Maybe that's why my dating life is the way it is. Because you know, sleep, I mean, sleep with green women. Yes. Well, in my case, uh, you know, white, white, white Puerto white Puerto Rican and whatever else you know that might be available. So you know, I mean, you know, that's it doesn't always have the you know the total positive. Well, anyway, but but I always said I want to be like this guy, strong leader. Um, and back then I was a little dweeby nerd and I had to grow into that. And these people don't understand what these things can mean. They really don't. They really just don't understand, you know. No, but yeah, yeah, when you said like he's a role model, okay, that's the thing that, like, okay, like I, I love Doctor Who, okay? So I always wanted a guy, uh, like, uh, the whole thing, it was as a, as a child, you have these, these cool dreams, like, you know, it's just like, uh, I remember sitting in class wishing the TARDIS would just show up and oh. <laughs> he would open the door. And he would say, listen, get the hell out of here. Let's go. Let's go on a journey. You know what I uh -huh. mean? Yeah. So yeah. You would have these, 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 and, and, you know, I remember Charles Barkley saying, listen, I'm not a role model. Okay. I'm not, a, you know, your daddy and mommy is a role model. Okay. If you got, I've heard him say that many times on TBS over the years, but, 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 but when, when you don't have a mommy and daddy, you watch TV you pick somebody that speaks to you and to you yep. is Captain Kirk. Okay. So yep. when these days, what I worry about is, you know, a kid watching TV now, um, like I, I, you know, I'm like, they don't really have, you know, they, it's kind, it's kind of like pushing an agenda that this should be your role model. And I'm like, no, that, back then they never pushed an agenda. They just made a good show where a kid really liked it. And you would, it was up to you if you wanted to be like strong, like that person or, uh, you know, uh, be another character uh, on a different show. Uh, but they were never pushing, you know, Captain Kirk or Doctor Who. It was always kind of pushing um, to save the planet, 
uh, to save. To well, save, in the case of Doctor Who, the entire universe. Yeah, you know, sometimes to, to save to 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 help people. Um, uh, you know, uh, go go. You know, eat, you know, there's evil out there, and you have to beat evil. Um, and and I look at shows today, and it's just like they are not worried about, uh, you know, like uh, evil or or anything like that. They're pushing like stupid agendas that they don't need to just just make like okay here's an example i love cartoons right okay so uh one of my favorite was uncle grandpa okay now, now if you ever see that show or gumball no nope, um, never seen them th these were oh wait nice. hold on let me be like kevin smith oh my god i love yeah, those so the, much they the, are the, i just the, loved everyone ah. you know you gotta get the tears but now they're not Water bottle, make tears. Should I yeah. pour it on my head? And, okay. and and now they're not they're not doing they're not um, they're boring. They're crap. They're they're like the other day they had Gonzo. You know this was on. I, I was just flipping on YouTube, and they had Gonzo dress up. Uh, say you know, and these are talk like kids are watching this, and he all of a sudden wants to be Gonzarella. And he turns into a dress, a dress, and he, you know, puts on slippers. No. Oh. Yeah. And I was going, I'm hold going, on, hold on. That story gets one of these. Oh, no. Yeah, Mike, it was like, I understand there are, <laughs> di but, but I understand they're diverse people, but how diverse are you if you're five or six years old? Just, That's just ridiculous. Just, just do a show that is fun. You don't need to, Okay, the people that are uh, what it would if you're diverse or if you're uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I, whatever, trans, fill in the blank. If you're a transgender person, that that is only what is it one or two percent of the population? If uh, that, no, I think it's less than that, but okay, okay, it's half of one percent, yeah. So okay. to me, it's like okay, great, like, like, but. Uh, you don't need to if you don't need to do that for kids man just do no. it just do a show like i believe if jim henson was still alive he'd be rolling in a like he'd, he'd die of a heart attack dude there's no way there's no way he would stand for all this stuff there's no, there's no it's, it's, way it's idiotic the the sesame street is there to teach kids abcs uh to be kind to one another and yes right. and yeah and of course be kind to uh uh transgenders of course you don't you don't no one sits no child at five or six years old sits there and watches a show saying you know what i hate gay people i hate transgender i hate that they just want to they just my god they're they're they could barely wipe their asses at that yes. age yes know? just have them enjoy a show stop stop it like Mike, the, the the thing that bothers me is they want people to fight and argue and and divide people. That's what bothers me. That is and exactly like, what's happening. And it's like stop doing that. Just if you just do a show that's just fun. That you're you, the message is this: uh, fun, be kind, and be respectful. Yep. And that's all you need. And yep. You got yourself an awesome show. Yeah. And they're not doing that. No, you know, you know, I don't understand. You know, when you sit there and you go, you watch a show or a movie and you sit there and go, you know what? I could do a better job than that. Oh, I'm sure you I'm sure you are in whatever, you know, I mean, you, you know, yeah. but I, I believe uh, uh, there's so many people out there that watch a movie or a show and just sit there and go, geez, if I had that money. Um, I mean, last night I watched some. Uh, it was like an exorcist show and uh, a movie on Netflix. Ha halfway through it, I turned it off because I go, this is beyond boring. This is this is not. This is dumb. Right. It's just, like, there's so much. Uh, there is so much content out there, but there's so much shit content, you know, like it's very rare that I'll watch a show now and go, wow, that that was awesome or whatever. You know what I mean? Like. I was never, uh, I was never a big Jackass fan. But last night I'm watching Jackass because I'm bored and I'm going, 
I feel like running myself, you know, into a, a tree at 90 miles an hour. So, can... <laughs> you know, it's funny you mentioned that. That's, I think, why we get along so well. I wasn't the biggest Jackass fan at all either. I mean, I certainly did see a bunch of them back in the day. When I saw the trailer the other day, I had this. I'm like, okay, great. I don't have any woke weirdo stuff. Right. I don't have any, you know, any weirdo stuff. I'm like, oh my God, don't give me something that I can actually enjoy. It's I mean, just... holy moly. It's just a group of guys screwing around, yes. having fun, uh, killing themselves. But it's yep. just, it, to me, there was no, <clears throat> there's no agenda. There's no, it's just be, just be an idiot. Yeah. And, and I think that's why they, those, those movies did so well. And these days, uh, He-Man, for example, they're pushing an agenda that no one gives a shit about. No one, no one right the real fans that that you know like if you're an executive uh and you're watching that show you're sitting there going okay listen uh most important thing here is we got to sell products and how we sell products is simple the show better be good yes because if if the show sucks nobody we're, you know we've ordered half a billion dollars worth of e-man shit okay yes okay so we're going to lose a fortune uh, uh, the, uh, you know, it, it, and I understand, but, but it's like, you, it, it's like, if you gave me, uh, you know, something to, to work on a show mm -hmm. or whatever, and I didn't know the, uh, the show, whatever show, just whatever show I would do everything 24 seven. If you said Vito by Saturday, I want you to give me a report on what you're going to do about this show. Right. I would either say, Mike, it's not for me. Or I would sit there and do so much homework, watch every as many episodes as possible, and yes. and try and figure out, okay, why was this so? Why did people love this so much? And, and here's another thing you would do. I'm sorry, go ahead. But I have one more thing I know you would do. You know, I, I, I and one thing, my name's going to be on it. I don't want to be the guy that people go, you screwed it up. Well, and to follow up on that, one of the things that you would do probably, which is just normal business, is guess what? You'd engage with your fans. Call them fans, customers, right? whatever. Don't call them consumers, but I guess you could if you wanted to. But you would engage with them. You wouldn't fight with them. You wouldn't battle them. You wouldn't call them names. You wouldn't try to cancel them and their wallets. Yeah. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And I do got to tell you, though, I do, based upon recent developments, I think there's something to look forward to and optimistic about. And let me throw this at you. So, as you know, on Midnight Edge, we cover, um, on all the Midnight Edge shows, we cover a lot of entertainment stuff. And uh, I just think that there's, Disney is certainly the largest controller, and the, they're the worst offender and the largest controller of the properties that so many of us have loved. Okay. But with this guy that's currently running at Chapek, there's, there's just, there's some changes going on. Now, I work for ExxonMobil in a younger life. That's where I learned all my tax, in my day life, I, I run a tax accounting firm. I learned international tax over at ExxonMobil. When you work for these large companies, not that I never worked for Disney, but, but when you work for these large companies, whenever there's a major shift or leadership change, it takes forever for that to manifest itself. It's not like a small business where, okay, you screwed up, you're fired. No, it's not like that. It's also not like Donald Trump used to do in the show, you're fired and you're out. It doesn't work that way with these, these large companies. Maybe with entrepreneurs in private sector it does, but not with these large companies. So what's happened recently is if you look at the articles, there's the finance articles like the Wall Street Journal, Forbes, and just two days ago, Inc., three, day, three or four days ago, Inc. Magazine. And then you have these other screen rant and the other ones. And you have this Chapek guy who's basically giving control of the properties to distributors and the merchandise people. And he's added a whole management layer against uh, uh, over over these creative types, these Wild West wackos, Kathleen Kennedy and others, right? Who I think, who I agree with all the analysis, all the people on the internet that say she's going, going, gone. And so I do think though that because ultimately, ultimately, it's like this: these people are my, these people think that they can have their little agendas and still have the same amount of cash. They can't because we stopped spending money, Vito. I mean, take me. Even if we hadn't been under the COVID or and, and the economic conditions weren't suppressed. I'm not at all interested in anything Star Trek at all. I'm barely interested in anything Star Wars. In fact, to this day, right now, uh, over in the corner, I've got to put them up on the wall still, but I've got 23 lightsabers, but I don't buy Disney lightsabers. I don't buy any of them because I refuse to give them my money because of what they've done, which is they've offended my sensibilities about things that are important to me. Um, 
uh, what Netflix did with He-Man is another story. But the point is, is that I'm a lightsaber collector. I, I have 23 of them. And I probably every second or third month, if I have an extra money from a check from a client, I'll buy one. But I buy custom ones. I spend three to seven hundred dollars type of thing. And, and I get these custom ones done, but they're not the ones from the movies. They're done by independent people who also have a love and a passion for Star Wars. And they create their own variations type of thing. Right. And what these idiots don't realize in Hollywood is that by calling all my white friends, because that's what they are. They're my friends. They're all my friends. They're my, and, and they're my internet brothers and sisters is really what they are. You know, when you start insulting them, insulting me, insulting all of us, well, guess what? We close our wallets and say, F you. You want to tell us F you? All right. Well, don't think you can tell us F off and you still get our money. You're, you're going to tell us. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of the Scarlett Johansson thing. I mean, I've always been a huge Scarlett Joe fan. I've always been more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy. Just the only Marvel character I ever liked was Iron Man, but uh, which is why I'm Mexican Iron Man. But as soon as she made the comments that she made about who she wanted to come to see her movie and this crap that she did, screw it. I didn't go to the movies. I didn't buy a ticket. To this day, yeah. I still haven't seen Black Widow. I'm done. You're done with me? Fine. I'm done with you. You don't want my money. And now you're now you're complaining and bitching about the fact that you didn't get all the money from a theatrical release? Well, you helped cause this problem, sweetheart. You know, and so yeah, yeah. the time, the clock is ticking. And we don't feel it yet. We don't see it. But there are little signs happening that things are going to change. And they are changing. It's hard to understand that and feel that way. And trust me, the hit that I took with He-Man after the hit, and then the hit with Kurt's been taking Star Trek, potentially getting this five-year deal. It's been a rough year. It's been a rough five years. But you know what? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Tell my son who just asked me for another Godzilla the other day that he couldn't have one. I want him to play with figures. I don't know how he ended up loving Godzilla because I always love Godzilla, but I guess he's my kid. I mean, we never discussed it. And out of nowhere, he's like, Dad, can I have Godzilla? I'm like, what the hell? How do you know? He hadn't I didn't have any around the house or nothing when he came to visit. Nothing. So it's so we've got to, we've got to, we've got, so I'm investing that money in a Godzilla that's coming that was hand custom done from a private place, you know, and that he, so he has something to play with, like I did when I was like a kid. Yeah. I want to make sure that he's just not sitting on Roblox all day, you know, on his iPad. Yeah. yeah, he has an iPad. I control everything on it. Uh, but I want to make sure he has stuff to play with. So I've always bought for him to, uh, airplanes, you know, when he was went through that phase, Godzilla, you know, space, you know, I want, he, he, you know, he, I want him to have that same experience because it's turning them into a different person than a lot of these kids are turning into because they don't have that and they have to have that connection, both with something that is connected to a property you watch and something they can connect with another person that also that they're playing with and interacting with. It's very important, Vito. Yeah, my son's not a, a big uh, Star Wars fan. He tried, he couldn't even watch the, the last movie. But uh, what we do is uh, yeah. We have Star Wars. We, we like his lightsaber, and I, of course, have uh, uh, my lightsaber. It's not worth seven hundred bucks, but it's the, it still looks cool because we go outside in the uh, backyard, and people like neighbors or whatever see us fighting, uh, you know, and it just looks so cool, you know. And I tell them about, like, I show them the old movies, and here's the thing with you know with like. He, he, he likes Luke Skywalker, but I, I don't like Luke Skywalker anymore, you know? Yeah. Because, well, of, because, because of, because of the way he, just the because way. Because of Mark Hamill? Yeah. Just the yeah. way he behaves. And I'm right. like, and, and it's crazy. Like, yeah. And it's just like, dude, just play your character. I don't, you're, here's the thing. When you start, uh, uh, yeah, and it, it's it, you're dividing people. And Absolutely. Just be like, remember what it was uh, Michael Jordan said. Listen, man, I'm not going to say any bad of anything bad about anybody because, uh, 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 you, be it Republican or Democrat, they're. I want them both to buy my product. So absolutely. You know, to me, be smart about it. Uh, there's a lot of celebrities that I see that are very moosh, quiet. And there's, and that's being smart. Okay. That's being, Hey man, I, you know, my views, like when you got, uh, uh, people like, uh, like I love the Hulk, but the guy who plays the Hulk, I think he's nuts, you know, oh, he's crazy. You know, like the, the stuff that he says is a real, it's a big turnoff. 
you know absolutely I mean, it's like dude just play your part don't don't like i i see like guys uh it's like i see them on on twitter and twitter is great for a dumpster fire but yeah if, if you go on twitter and you hear what they say like uh about certain people or whatever and hey i'm not a donald trump guy i'm canadian i don't care uh yeah uh but the stuff they say about certain people you sit there and you go you are alienating uh uh, uh you're calling these people dumb or stupid or or uneducated yes. what the hell man just read your lines have fun and 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 and, and uh, uh when you do a q a and somebody asks you about your political views do what i say hey man that's private you know right i, I love everybody you want to come see a good movie Come watch my movie. Come watch my show. I'm not going to sit there and tell you that uh, these people suck or you're stupid or you're this. That's a to me. It just seems like half the people that are doing it, they're doing it just for their agent to like their agent saying this will get you more work. Right. And I to me it's 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 like dude, that's not the way to go about it. Just how, what will get you more work. Just do a good job. Uh, love your fans. Be respectful. Like, remember when when uh, 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 Mark Hamill was pissed off about, uh, uh, and they shut him up really quick when he just said Ray all of a sudden is an amazing uh, uh, Jedi, and right. he he had to go. He had to go to you know he had Yoda teach him. He had it took a while to learn to be a Jedi, and all. Oh yeah. Of and all of a sudden, she's, you know, a Jedi, you know? Right. And and Mark was not happy about that. And I wouldn't either. But all of a sudden, he changed his tune. Well, money has the money. Money corrupts. Absolutely. Doesn't it? Yes. Money is the the and I, I believe that is the poison that, hey, you know, if you were to say to me, uh, hey, Vito, I'll give you 10 million to do this movie or whatever but I want it a certain way. Yeah, I think I would do it, but you would still, you would still feel like shit, man. And, the, the, and, and, and uh, you know, the, 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 there's that old saying, you never see a guy crying in a Ferrari, right? So right. I think that's the mentality of a lot of people of in Hollywood or whatever, just saying, you know what, dude, I'm here. I do what, you know, whatever I need to do to make money, which, right. it, which I get it. But at the end of the day, when things start changing and things will eventually change, people are going to remember that. They're going to remember what you said. I think so. I think so. And I think, I think people are much more guarded than they've ever been about stuff with their families and stuff. I, um, I see people tightening up left and right. I mean, I really do. And I'm, and I'm, I'm not, I'm definitely, my woke meter is, uh, is ridiculously high and it probably will be high for a long time, but I'm starting to see little changes and little cracks and in, in this and that. And uh, my good friend, Cameron Pasha is someone who reports on it regularly on our channels and uh, all evidence to me leads, leads me the way, because this isn't sustainable forever. This, this whole wokeity, wokeity, woke, woke, woke crap. I mean, just take a look at Marx himself, that, you know, moron. I mean, he was a lazy piece of crap. He was a deadbeat dad and he just wanted money and he didn't want to do anything for it. So you can't, nothing, 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 nothing stands in perpetuity that's built on laziness, sloth and division. It takes unity and strength in order to move forward. And that's what we have to stay. We have to, we, we can't let them get us down. Even when I get down and, as, and I've been down, you've seen me be down. You've seen those rants that I've done where I've been, you know, I, I didn't expect to feel that way. I felt awful. I still feel yeah. awful. But you know what I did? You know what I did, Vito? As I called my I, I, I called my, my family and had them uh, send me out some stuff they had at the house. And guess what? I opened up a box of that had inside that, that I found that, that, that I hadn't opened up in a long time. My He-Man, my He-Man videos oh, from years awesome. ago. And I have them right here. And I rewatched some of them. I got, here, hold on. Watch. I don't know if you can see them. Can you see them down there? No, but I believe you. I totally, right I totally, I totally believe you. Can you see them? No. No, it's fine. But I totally no? believe okay. you. Yeah, yeah, they're okay. down there. They're on the shelf right there. So, I, 
I know, you know, you so I, I rewatch as, as hurtful, as mad as I was at Kevin Smith, I re got it. But, you know, mm-hmm. here's the thing with Kevin. And then this is probably the last comment I'll do for, for my last commentary on that. But, you know, you can have I shouldn't say, you know, I always say, you know, the all the money in the world wouldn't me matter much to me if the people whose respect that I thought I earned and the people that I thought I loved or we love the same stuff. And, you know, like leaves and then I'm by myself. So what I'm by myself with a pile of money. Right. I've been, I've, I've been, I've been broke. I've been homeless. I've been a millionaire twice and lost it twice in my life. And I'm, you know, I'm no spring chicken. And I can tell you this, you know, whether you got a lot of money or you're broke, it's a hell of a lot better to look, to be able to look yourself in the mirror than, uh, than I would want to, I wouldn't want to be Kevin right now. As much money as he's got, which I think that, you know, we checked the other yeah. day's net worth like 20, 30 million. I don't want 20, 30 million. And then everybody that thought loved me now hates me and is mad at me. And I don't even want to turn on my Twitter account or go do a live stream on YouTube unless I can force people to pay. I don't want that life. There, not to down for 20 million, not for 50 million, but that's me. I'm different, but I, you no, know, that's, I, that's, that's cool. That's like, I, 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 I understand. And a lot of people are going, are you crazy? It's like 25 million, but I mean, I've never had that kind I, of money. I, I but, don't think, but here's the thing. I think he screwed up so bad. I really don't think anybody's going to go to him and go, we want you to work on this because it's going to like, like the next movie he's making is, uh, clerks whatever clerks three right i really don't think anybody's gonna give a shit like people are just you know it's clerks three so uh i know you gotta go do another show i appreciate this do you think uh uh uh, in summary when do you think things will start changing uh do you see it a year two five i'd say about two years from now two years from now definitely by five years this is all gonna be over for sure and do you think that uh, 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 John Favreau is going to be the, he's always doing, like he always does an awesome job, but yeah. do you think guys like him that truly have a passion are going to rise to the top and just say, you know what, let's make an awesome, just like an awesome movie. I mean, uh, uh, I went to the theater the other day and I think it was just me and my son. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it just it was just it was like i like being there by myself but it was just like i'm sitting there going this is not sustainable man well it's not i mean we've certainly got a lot of compete i don't know if theaters will survive i didn't answer that question i don't know if they will i sure hope they do and let me tell you this video is that uh um i do have another show that i got to do but if i can hit the last show tonight i'm going to go to the movies and if i don't go today i'm going tomorrow i'm trying to go i used to go once or twice a week even if it's with either by myself with a date when i was married with my wife whatever I love going and I want to go and I've been going the last two weeks and I just love it. It's, it's such a different experience than watching it okay. at home. And I do prefer it. Listen, thank you so much for this. Hey, Greg, you're, you're you welcome, know. buddy. You're welcome, man. And, thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, I know you got to run and do the show, but uh, I love these topics and I really, uh, uh, I love talking to somebody that, that really knows the subject matter, you know, that, you know, that means a lot, you know, well, thank you. We'll talk again and then, uh, you know, offline and online. And, uh, you know, let's uh, let's keep spreading the word as we are and, you know, bring positivity and knowledge to the masses. So I'll, all right, Vito, I'll see you next week, maybe. Huh? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Folks, awesome. Thanks, thanks, brother. Vito. Uh, we've been talking to uh, Mexican Mike, Iron, Ma- Iron Man. Um, thank you so much. Be safe. Be good and be kind to each other. OK, I'll talk to you later. Ciao. Bye, everybody.